everybody, my name is Matt and welcome to Downshift. Today I'm in one of the best selling SUVs in the world consistently. Today I'm in the 2018 Lexus RX 350. This fourth generation Lexus came to us in 2016 and the bold styling combats the whole Lexus is for grandpa's stereotype. Um, the spindle grille up front might be a little bit much for me. Uh, it looks kind of pinched and a little bit like a mouse. If you put some ears on top, it might be a little Mickey-esque. But overall, it's subjective. Um, I really love the way it looks in the F-Sport uh, trim with the mesh grille, so it really is subjective to you on looks. However, certain things are not subjective, like the standard LED headlights and taillights that look honestly fantastic, uh, as well as the 20-inch wheels that are multi-colored. Uh, on my tester here, we have a nice kind of brushed dark gray with kind of a darker gray accenting. It looks really, really nice. Um, and it gives this car like a mean, mean stance. Speaking of stance, once you get to the side of the car, you start to realize how large it is. Uh, this car has about the same dimensions as the Toyota Highlander, so it's absolutely not a small vehicle. Um, new for 2018, actually, Lexus introduced a three-row version. This is the L or long wheelbase trim. Uh, you can option that if you choose. If you do not, the rear seats will be very, very large and have plenty of room. Uh, my tester is without the third row, um, but I would absolutely take this uh, fantastic rear legroom. Now looking at the profile of this vehicle, you do notice that Lex the Lexus RX uses that kind of uh, floating roof design, where the, the rear window, where it would kind of be siphoned off by the body panel, uh, it's devoid or it's painted black, so it's matched to look like the window as if to give the roof a floating effect. And as we move from profile to the rear, uh, that is my favorite view of the car. The LED taillights look menacing, as well as the rhombus-shaped exhaust, which inevitably are fake, uh, but they are rhombus-shaped, so there's a geometry lesson for the day. In order to get into the car, you have a standard keyless entry with push-button start. It does not have... Uh, it does not have remote start uh, on the key. You have to go into the Lexus app to remote start your vehicle. And speaking of the key, this thing needs a little bit of a refresh, Lexus. It looks a little old and dated. However, as we step into the cabin, this is where Lexus really shines. The fit and finish is where they do their best work. Everything is textured. Everything has a contrasting stitching, uh, a contrasting texture. You know, most people would take this headliner and just put some cheap cloth there, but it's so soft. It's extremely plush. The leather is... It's, it's weird for me to compliment the leather, but it's so soft and supple uh, and just extremely you know, nice to the touch. You've got contrasting wood. Um, this is inevitably painted plastic on the dash. Um, I would have preferred they gone for an aluminum, but still, you get a very premium feeling in this vehicle, and everything that you touch is is very well weighted. Um, the the volume knob is well weighted, and it's it's got a very premium feel to it. Nothing cheap within this cabin at all. Well done, Lexus. You're doing the best job out there. Now, speaking of wood and leather, you do get a wood and leather steering wheel, uh, and the steering wheel can be heated. Uh, however, you can't really heat wood, so you get the heating elements on 9 and 3 on the leather portions of your steering wheel where you have your hands. Now, like I said, as you step into the vehicle, you have a very easy step-in height. Uh, you sit upon these luxurious leather thrones that are heated and optionally cooled. Um, they're, they're fantastic. Now, once you sit down, your eye is immediately drawn to this 12.3 inch screen uh, because it is massive and it is bright and it is vivid. Uh, I love it. It is strangely and kind of awkwardly far away from you, which I think is, is kind of a strange design, but uh, it, it looks good and it, it kind of has to be so big because it's so far away from you. Um, but in any case, it is controlled through Lexus's little kind of like mouse uh, like computer mouse design. Uh, this, to me, is the biggest fault of the car. It's very difficult to use. Uh, I haven't driven this car very, very long. Um, so for me, there is a learning curve. The new Acura RDX actually has kind of like a, a trackpad instead of a mouse. I think that's much more intuitive and it works a lot better. Uh, it's easier to use. Also within the infotainment, you can split your screen. So you can have nav on one side and radio on the other. You can flip it, you can do whatever you want. Um, this infotainment actually is devoid of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, um, which I think is kind of silly in this day and age. Everybody has that. It's not that hard to equip. Uh, you can connect to your phone, obviously through Bluetooth and everything, uh, and you can connect to your phone through the Lexus app. Now you'll notice that my tester does not have a panoramic sunroof. 
Uh, panoramic sunroof is an option, but it is a $1,500 option. This tester just happens to not have it equipped, but it is an option that you can equip your Lexus RX with. Now, like I was saying, this is not the long wheelbase with the third row seating, so the rear seat room is expansive. It's very palatial. Again, fantastic, exquisite leathers and materials back there. Uh, no chintzing out on the back seat at all. They do just have dual vents. I would love to have seen some USBs back there, uh, maybe a 12 volt, you know, there is a rear, uh, a heated rear seat option that you can equip, um, but it is not on this tester, unfortunately. Moving back even further, you do get a power tailgate as standard. Um, the gesture control is optional, and I have to talk about this because it is kind of strange. Um, the gesture control is not your typical foot kick. It is a wave over the rear Lexus emblem, which to me is a little counterintuitive. Um, <clears throat> You know, the idea of the whole foot kick gesture for the tailgate for me is, let's say you're leaving the grocery store, you have a bunch in your hands, uh, you need to kick your foot because you don't have a free hand, that'll open the tailgate for you and you can put everything down. Now with this, you have to wave your hand over it, you're gonna drop your groceries everywhere. It's just, it's kind of counterintuitive, I don't know if it really works, but granted I haven't used it in that capacity. Once you do manage to get into the tailgate, you are met with 18.7 cubic feet of space with the rear seats up. They do fold 60-40, uh, and with the rear seats down, you do get a uh, 56, uh, 56 about cubic feet of space. Uh, this is less than some competitors like the MDX and the Volvo XC90, um, but still decent space, and you get a lot of space in your, in your rear seats, which actually I forgot to mention do recline, and with an option you can have power reclining rear seats. Now to driving dynamics, uh, every Lexus RX 350 comes with a 3.5 liter naturally aspirated V6 engine uh, with about 295 horsepower, which is up about 25 horsepower from the previous gen, uh, and 260, 267 pound-feet of torque. Now this is more power than the Acura uh, R, excuse me, MDX <laughs> that it directly competes with. However, the Acura MDX through transmission and the super handling all-wheel drive somehow manages to be a little bit more sporty feeling. This is more of a floaty, luxurious cruiser, and you have a, a pointed with rich leather. Now there is a hybrid variant. You can get a Lexus uh, RX 450H. This will actually give you 13 more horsepower uh, and increase your fuel economy uh, to 31 city and 28 highway, which is pretty fantastic for a vehicle of this size. Um, all Lexus RXs come with an eight-speed automatic. This is the only offering available. Uh, the car weighs about 4,500 pounds, uh, which means you're going to get to 60 in my, not the hybrid version, in about uh, 6.8 seconds, which is not fast, but it's not slow either. Now also with a vehicle like this, you do have some towing capacity. You can tow about 3,500 pounds. And now mine not being the hybrid, being the naturally aspirated V6, uh, I get about 19 miles per gallon city uh, and about 20 mpg highway. This is on premium gas recommended. Uh, there is no auto start stop here uh, or cylinder deactivation, which I think could improve fuel economy a little bit. But honestly, for the extra power that you would get with the hybrid uh, and added fuel economy, I don't see any reason that you shouldn't option up to the uh, RX 450H hybrid engine. Now, like I said, don't get it confused. This is not a sporty vehicle, but it's not supposed to be. This is one of the most luxurious and softest and most plush rides uh, that I've been in. When I was 16, I worked at a car dealership and I would drive S-Classes around whenever I could because they were so luxurious and floaty. It was something so foreign to me and whatever. ...on the interior here. Uh, the cabin is just in completely you know, totally damped from outside road noise, any tire noise. Um, you know, the steering is extremely light. Uh, you don't exert any energy into it. It's very, very luxurious. It's very relaxing. Um, and as a, <laughs> as a product of that relaxation, Lexus equips uh, with their standard safety suite, you get a kind of, they're calling it like a lean watch. So it kind of monitors your behavior as you drive to make sure that you don't fall asleep behind the wheel. Could be necessary. Now for added convenience, you can option this with a heads-up display. Of course, you can adjust brightness and the location of the heads-up display on your windshield. Uh, my tester's not equipped with such, but you can have that if that's something that you would feel like you need. Now I'm talking about this, how this car is not sporty, and it's not super sporty, but it does have a sport mode. Uh, Lexus F Sport trims will get a Sport Plus mode, uh, which kind of just turns things up a bit. But the sport mode on this is, it's okay, it kind of just adjusts your gearing uh, and where your shift points are. It holds the gear a little bit longer, you get higher in the revs, uh, you get a little bit more from the V6, which is actually surprisingly smooth. 
Um, it's it's a nice little engine. It's again not super sporty oriented, um, but you do also come you do also get a normal drive mode and an eco mode. Eco mode obviously is to preserve fuel. Uh, if you do have it in eco, and you try to floor it, you're going to get a lot of rumbling, um, <clears throat> which is a little strange. Now, in addition to keeping you awake, this car also offers adaptive cruise, forward collision warning, uh, passive lane keep assist, the steering wheel will vibrate for you. Um, speaking of a steering wheel, I'm just, I forgot to mention earlier that the uh, the wood here has little dimples. I can, I'm thinking you can see that in the, in the video here, um, but it actually is really nice. Again, kind of lending to the premium feel uh, of this RX and the whole Lexus cabin together. Um, anyway, so <laughs> passive lane keep assist will jiggle and kind of vibrate the steering wheel, uh, keep you awake. Again, last kind of thing they have is just the stay awake warning. Um, <clears throat> so you're kind of probably wondering, how much can I get into a Lexus RX for? Uh, these things start at about $43,000. Uh, it's a pinch cheaper than an MDX from Acura, but the German variants, all the rivals, the, the Mercedes GLE, um, BMW X5, they're going to be significantly cheaper, much closer to 50 grand. Now you can option this thing up fairly significantly. You can get an F Sport package for about six grand more. This honestly is what I might have. Uh, it gives you better looks with the mesh grill, bigger wheels, uh, more aggressive stance. Uh, you get that, that Sport Plus mode uh, and it kind of tightens up the suspension and does stuff like that. You can get a Lux package, which is another five grand from the initial 43,000. This is another thing that would be really nice if you want added creature comforts. Um, you can do a nav system upgrade for $2,500. You can get a panoramic sunroof for $1,500. All wheel drive is a $1,500 option. So ultimately this RX is focused on refinement and it delivers that at a competitive price for my opinion. Uh, if you want more sport or power, you're gonna have to pay a lot more for it. You're gonna have to get into the German variants, the Mercedes, Audi, BMW, uh, whatever that may, may be. Uh, but there's a reason that the RX consistently sells so well and it's so good at being good. Uh, Consumer Reports rates this thing as, you know, for the seventh year in a row, Lexus has been the most reliable brand. Uh, there's a reason that these things hold their value so well and their resale value is so high. Um, they're a fantastic, fantastic piece of equipment. They're reliable, they're luxurious, and they're everything that you want in a luxury SUV like this. I also want to say thank you to my friends at Napleton, Lexus of Milwaukee, uh, for making this video possible. They've taken great care of me and they will do the same for you. So go check out the RXs on their lot. So I hope this video was helpful for you. I hope you liked it. Uh, if you did, please leave a comment, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye. Thank you.